Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ed Chi. I'm the area manager for a new area here called Augmented Social Cognition. And welcome to Park Forum. This is a, the 11th talk of a special speaker series called Going Beyond two, uh, Web 2.0. And uh, we've ha already had uh, a number of very uh, good talks in this series that are very well attended. And they're recorded and made available on the park.com slash form website. And they have included uh, speakers such as uh, Ross Mayfield, uh, Guy Kawasaki, who came by and talked about how to build a Web 2.0 website on the cheap. Uh, we've had Bernardo uh, Huberman from HP Labs um, talking about sort of the physical modeling of uh, Web 2.0 phenomenons. We've had BJ Fogg from Stanford, Fernanda Villegas, and Martin Wittenberg from IBM, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, in addition to today's talk, uh, the next two weeks, uh, just as a little bit of advertisement, we have also ha are going to have uh, Lisa uh, Patridis, who is from a uh, open Education Consortium, who is going to be here talking about how Web 2.0, uh, Web 2.0 is transforming uh, the education uh, domain. And then after that, on March 27th, we have uh, high power speaker uh, Chris Anderson, uh, the uh, the writer of the book The Long Tail, is going to be here actually talking about his new book called uh, Free, and uh, so. I uh, encourage you to attend the next two forms as well. Um, for today, we're very happy to have uh, the Yahoo Delicious team here um, to talk about how to make delicious tastier. Um, delicious, as many of you know, is one of the most uh, popular and most used uh, bookmarking website out there on the internet right now. And um, Bernard Kerr, uh, is from New Zealand, so I have to learn uh, the correct pronunciation, uh, pronunciation of his name. Is the lead designer uh, for Delicious. He's in charge of the entire user experience on Delicious and the whole ecosystem of the products that surround it. And prior to working at Yahoo, he was a strategic designer at IBM Research in their collaborative user experience group. Uh, he's also published in places like Infoviz and Kai. Uh, conferences that I attend regularly. Uh, before joining uh, IBM Research, he held positions at Interval Research, uh, very nearby, and as well as IBEO. And uh, he graduated from Royal College of Art uh, in their computer-related design program in London in 2000. And he also holds a bachelor's degree in architecture from Victoria University in New Zealand from uh, 92. Uh, we also have uh, Joshua Schachter, who's here. Um, many of you know him as the founder of Delicious, who pretty much, I would say, single-handedly put uh, book social bookmarking and social tagging uh, on, the f on, on the surface of, uh, of the web. And he has been uh, front and center at Yahoo ever since the, the Delicious has been acquired in December of 2005. Uh, not known exactly how much it was acquired for. Uh, but he has been responsible since being acquired uh, for the overall strategic direction of Delicious platform as well as the user community, as well as uh, a lot of the strategies around social search. Um, he did Delicious actually in 2005, um, but he actually started as a personal hobby in 2003, and before that, Joshua spent 10 years uh, in New York in the financial services industry. So without further ado, um, Joshua and Bernard. Hi, my name is Joshua, and uh, I founded Delicious. Uh, uh, like we just heard, uh, I actually built Delicious over many years. Um, so I'm just going to go over a little bit of history and then introduce, bring up Bernard here to actually talk about the future. Um, so something that always gets asked is, uh, how did I come up with the name? So I'll just cover that really quickly. Um, when .us became available in 2001, 
I thought it would be funny to write a quick program to look at the dictionary and look at all of the um, endings of words that would let me construct uh, a domain that had the, the, the maximum possible number, right? So uh, I found that Ishus, Ashus, and uh, Atios, A-T-I-O-S, the U.S., uh, actually were the, the, the three biggest. And uh, as I grabbed two of them, someone else had the same idea and grabbed the third, so I got, among others, Ishus. And that let me put together, you know, all kinds of uh, silly names um, with that, you know, that I, like I said, this is 2001. I had no idea what I was going to do with it, um, but there were all sorts of uh, 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 possible names. Um, and you see uh, delicious, and for a while I had the idea of putting a blog vicious. And for a while, we actually, I actually ran a second copy of delicious at suspicious for uh, the beta um, where I would actually develop. When I first started working on Delicious, there weren't that many people on it, so I'd actually change the code on the live site. And that turned out to not be very scalable, so I moved my development to Suspicious and just put a big, don't use this. And I figured the name would be a big hint. Um, but people started using that too, so I had to shut it down after only a week. Um, so we ended up with Delicious. When we first started, um, a, a conversation I had around it with, uh, uh, with a friend of mine over... Um, finding good links that somehow taste good, and, and the, the, the notion originally was something of like, like cherries, you know, you, 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 they, 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 it's, a, it's a tart good thing, you know, one little thing and you can have, have lots of them. So, so the idea is like good links are like good food or nourishing somehow. So, so the food analogy uh, is basically where we uh, ended up. So in the late 90s, I guess in uh, 1996, Seven or so, I started with a friend of mine, a, a early blog, although this was before the word blog was really invented, uh, called Meanpool. And down at the bottom it said, uh, you know, if you have a good link, email it to us. And, and people did. We'd get lots and lots of links. And but this is back when you could still put an email address on a web page and not get it filled with spam. And uh, people would send in lots and lots of uh, links. And I would look at them and say, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Um, and uh, I would paste it into a text file that I had on a Unix box somewhere. And uh, uh, over time, it got very, very large and unmanageable. But uh, while I used it, I actually uh, I would put notes in the file. So you can see here, um, this is probably the first tag from that file. Um, you see, hash, hash means comment in Unix, hash map. And I'm generally pretty terse, so that's, that's my notes for that thing. That's what that was about. So, one day someone asked me, have you heard about this Wi-Fi thing? Um, it seems pretty interesting. I said, yes, I've been, I've been tracking it for a while. So I grepped out of my links file everything that had hash Wi-Fi, which things I had noted as being about Wi-Fi. And uh, I got 20 or so links and emailed it to him. And I thought, well, you know, that's interesting. I should, I should do something with that. So I built an individual, you know, after that links file got to about 20 or 30,000 lines, uh, there was a second one also. Um, it, I couldn't find anything after a while, so I rewrote it as a, uh, a web app. So uh, this is actually a screenshot out of Archive, um, thanks to Bernard. Um, and uh, I, I started around uh, 2001. This is a later image. Um, you can see that the dates are actually 2003 in this particular case. And uh, basically it was uh, consisted of a bookmarklet, um, three fields. Uh, I, I always rewrote the title, so it's a little bit different from Delicious is now. Um, but uh, in form, although it was single user, structurally it was very similar to delicious. Um, you, you have uh, the item, uh, you see obsess, which is the tag. Um, at that time, I was, I guess, meta-obsessed with other people's obsessions that they would then put on the, the web. Um, and the notion, the idea that people could put notes on other people, on, on my bookmarks, which, which hardly got used. So. I think a few days before uh, Foo Camp in 2003, I decided I was going to rewrite um, uh, Muxway to be the user. And this was the very, very first uh, version of that. And you can see someone already trying to screw up my bad Unicode uh, implementation here. Um, and this is within the first maybe 100 bookmarks uh, that were posted to Delicious. The, the early bookmark is uh, September 10th, 2003 or so. So you can already see, it, it, you know, it, it, it uh, for a long time, the front page was a variant of this on Delicious, right? The, the most recently uh, bookmarked items, who it is, and what they, what they did. Um, but 
I, and I actually had to learn CSS to do this stuff. Uh, but this is about a, a couple months later, I guess. And uh, it already had a, a great deal of the structure that's in Delicious Now. Um, you can see here um, the color hint saying uh, the activity around the thing. Um, this, this may have well been all of the bookmarks posted in an hour on Delicious. I think we get that every second now. Um, the number of items saved, you don't see the tags associated with each item, uh, which, which I think was a mistake. It's a big hint about what the thing is about. And the most active tags uh, on the right there, which is still almost exactly the same these today. So uh, a little bit further on, we have the, uh, the salmon colors here. Uh, which uh, to move the, the highlight off, we, I tried a number of different uh, uh, design um, ways to hint the user that, that uh, the thing was busy. Um, changing, the, changing the size of the font I think was the very original thing, which I think later Flickr and other, other um, uh, systems called tag clouds. Um, and I rejected it pretty early on for being too eye pokey, changing the size of the font uh, all through the page. And then this was, uh, I think, earlier today. Uh, thank you for that one. That's a good. Um, so this is this is what the system looks like right now, uh, and you can see this is this is Bernard looking at my uh, my current bookmarking page, and this is just stuff I found, uh, and you can see it's largely very similar. So I think that's about it. It's, Bernard's up. So Bernard's going to talk about uh, where we're going from here. Hi there. So, so by Joshua inventing this, this system, he basically created the concept of social bookmarking. And it's, basically, it's spawned an industry. Um, a lot of people have seen this, like the ideas, taking the ideas of tagging all around the web. And if you go out there and look for social bookmarking sites, there's a ton. And this is a little sample that I took about a year ago. Um, I go a bit slower. Um, and they're all very much of a muchness. And even Yahoo had a go at it as well. It's still there. So while everyone else is sort of copying a lot of the ideas that Joshua had, um, Delicious has, from its birth has continued to grow. So as we said, it was born in September. Um, by December 2004, it reached about 40,000 people. Uh, by 2005, end of 2005, it reached 300,000 people. And this is the time where Yahoo acquired Delicious. Since then, uh, it's hit a million, uh, almost a year later. Uh, about six months after that, we hit two million. Uh, late last year, end of last year, we hit three million. And just um, a couple of weeks ago, we hit four million. So this all seems very good. Um, so the question is, wh why, why, with all these competitions out there, why is Delicious still being successful? And I think there's a lot of reasons for this. Um, and it's a lot to do with the ecosystem around the, the system itself, the RSS feeds, the extensions that we've built. Um, but I think fundamentally, there's the problem with bookmarks. It solves a problem that people have. And I think this has always been our focus with Delicious, like how can we help people look after the bookmarks and things they find on the web? So the classic browser is, is sort of where this problem starts. If you have a browser, you can fit like 30 or so bookmarks on it before you have to put things in folders and then it will start scrolling off the screen. And there's other places on the browser where you can store bookmarks. So the home page is one bookmark. Um, there's a bookmark browser bar um, that you can get like 10 into that and then it, start, and then it sort of breaks apart. Then the menu, like I said, you get at 30 or 40 before it breaks down. And the thing about Delicious is you can get hundreds and even thousands of bookmarks on the system without it, without it failing. And so to create this, there's a whole lot of concepts that had to come along uh, with Delicious that help you at scale to this level. So one of the fundamental ones is tags. The thing about tags is that it's very open. People can use it and abuse it the way they want to. And it sort of sorts itself out. As you add more things with the same tags, they sort of stack up and it's OK. It doesn't have to have a predefined category list that you have to put things into. You don't need to have a folder or a set of folders that you're always trying to forget or remember which one you should put something into. So tags is a real one of those fundamental concepts that, that helps delicious scale. 
Um, another nice advantage about Delicious is that you can get to your bookmarks from anywhere. So any computer with internet connection, you can get to your bookmarks. If your thing gets crashes or you lose it, you've still got access to it. You can do stuff at home and at work and still have the one place you can store everything together. Um, Joshua could have made a system where everything, everybody could store their bookmarks online and use tags, and that would have been a fine system. But he decided to make it public and make it sort of shareable by default. And that creates a whole lot of other interesting things that you can do with the, with the bookmarks. For example, looking at what's popular for a particular tag or popular in general or popular for a particular um, space of time. Um, so in case none of you have seen how it works, here's a little quick demo. Uh, in this case, you've installed an extension. It has a little few buttons up the top. You're wandering around. You see a, a thing that you want to bookmark. You click this tag thing. It pops up a little window. It has a very s small set of fields. It's got three or four fields that you can fill in. You add the tags that, or notes that you want to, and then hit save. And then later on, when you want to go check out your bookmarks, you go to delicious uh, and with the username with the slash your username. And then you get to see your bookmarks. You can see that that thing I just bookmarks at the top. It's a chronological, reverse chronological order, so the most recent things always at the top. Um, we collect all the tags that you've um, been using. Uh, you can see the pink, that lovely salmon color we talked about before. Um, so that that's it. And then there's a bunch of other pages on the site that are that are sort of the key for an individual. There's a network page where you can. Uh, create a list of uh, friends that are using Delicious and sort of it's like an aggregator aggregating all their bookmarks together. You can set up subscriptions and subscribe to different tags or people's tags. And so it's another sort of internal aggregator within Delicious. And then there's a, we call the links for you page, which uh, well is, a, is, a, is an internal mechanism for sharing bookmarks uh, with a secret tag that you use. You use your four colon and username and then it turns up in somebody's links for you list. So those are the, the really the four sort of fundamental pages for an individual on the site. Um, and then we have four other sort of key pages, uh, popular, recent, um, URL pages, and, and the search, of course. Um, and for these four, on the left-hand side, you can refine each of those pages by a tag. So you can say, oh, just show me this person's design tag, for instance, or for the network or for popular or recent. And that's a really important um, sort of piece of functionality because it helps you like, restrict what you're looking at instead of saying everything, you sort of look at a much smaller set of, of bookmarks. And this brings up this concept we call pivot browsing. So if you're looking at a person and a, a tag, a particular tag, all the bookmarks for a particular tag, you can pivot on that and see everything that the network has for that tag, or pivot again and see all the popular bookmarks for that tag, or just the most recent things for that tag. And in addition to seeing one tag, you can also do tag intersections, or combine two tags, so everything with like design and animation together for a person and again for a network. So this is like another fundamental concept that was is sort of integral to the to delicious as as a system. So, I'm sure a lot of you people have be, have got delicious, have been using it, loving it. So, what are we going to do for the new design? So, we can web 2.0 it. We can make it lovely and shiny and um, glossy, like a web 2.0 application should be. But we are not going to do that. Um, what we wanted, to, what we did, we sort of stepped back and looked at the system that we had built, and then created a sort of philosophy about it about what, what are the important aspects of, of Delicious and how can we amplify those and make it clearer and more understandable to people and sort of bring more people into the system. So this is, this is a big challenge because we have uh, four million people who have signed up for this thing and they love it. So when we do our new design, we've got to be very careful that we don't piss off the existing community. And then we've got a, a number of communities, just one community. There's, there's, at least two broad categories. We have people who create bookmarks for themselves, and then we have people who just come and use Delicious and browse around and find interesting bookmarks, interesting things there. So I have this sort of um, breakdown of a sort of a collaborative system, and this can be applied to anything like email as an example, but there's sort of like four things you could do with a collaborative system. You create things, you manage them, you can browse things, you can share them. So a creator in the system will do all of these things, 
And then we have another category of people who just come to the site and use it, and they're just browsing it. So we have to sort of address both of those classes of people when, when they're using Delicious. And Delicious is sort of, you know, is it called a social, um, social bookmarking system, but it's very sort of selfish in its core. It's really useful to the individual. Even if no one else used the system, it would actually be very useful to you. But it has that sort of nice sort of virtuous circle where the, as you collect more stuff and other people collect more stuff, you get this nice virtuous circle where you get to find more interesting things that other people have been collecting and see what other cool stuff is on the web. So like when we're planning for this, we sort of have to keep that individual in mind and not just always think about the, the larger community looking at it. We want to keep a lot of the delicious flavor. There's sort of quirks and idiosyncrasies is in delicious. Uh, and we don't want to sort of suddenly flip the switch and then show people a completely new site and they would be totally blown away by how weird it is and not like delicious it was a second, a second ago. And I kind of think of the, the problem from the design point of view as um, delicious, it's the system as it exists right now is, is a very, uh, it's got a lot of really good mechanisms and sort of the structure of it, um, the, the, um, the way you use it and the, the ob objects in the system are very, very smart and well, well thought out, but they don't communicate themselves very well. So it's sort of like a game of Monopoly where everything's pink and blue. And you could play a game of Monopoly like this, but it wouldn't be that much fun. And it'd be, it's sort of hard to remember the components or what, how, the, how you should use the system. So what we wanted to do was sort of bring a bit of um, clarity to the system to try and help explain the system to people so they, can, they know how to use it. So to do this, we had to sort of go back, to, like I was saying, to the core concepts of Delicious. If you step back, there's sort of, um, you know, the fundamental thing is bookmark, so, you know, that's sort of the core. But the other, the other two concepts really are, are people and tags. And so we need to bring these things out in the system much, much more strongly. And um, at the moment, the, the sort of, the people aspect isn't, isn't really very strong on the system, and we're going to try and bring that out more strongly in the in new design. And if, if, if someone comes to the system and can understand that there are people here and they're using tags to make bookmarks, then that's sort of 80% of the way to understanding Delicious. Another aspect of, of the sort of core of Delicious is the time aspect, so to understand that things are in a reverse chronological order, and th that's the way that th things are stored. And, also that we can sort of segment things and show you the most recent stuff based on the activity of the community. Um, another sort of part of the design philosophy is that we want to be information rich. So we want to keep the data density high so that you really get a lot of value and a lot of bookmarks and you can sort of scan things really quickly and see the, see the actual information, not too much fluff. One of the users that we showed this in the usability test said, um, I'm really glad you didn't turn this into an angry fruit salad. So. I think we were doing well there. Um, part of the structure of Delicious is that we use pretty URLs up on the top in the address bar. You can actually see sort of a description of what the page is. And for um, sort of advanced users, that's sort of okay because, you know, they can go up there and hack into it. But for regular users, that's a little bit hard to, to, to understand. So here's an example. Like, these are my bookmarks that are tagged design and book. So what we want to do is bring that address bar structure and turn it into UI in, in the system, in the, on the page. Um, those key sort of eight pages that I described before, we're going to put some icons on there so you can sort of see the distinction between those pages a little more. But the biggest sort of challenge for, for the redesign is thinking about the typography of the page. Now, if you look at the page here, there is, it's a lot of words. You know, everything, almost everything on that page is clickable. Uh, and, you know, we're pulling out some of the things as, you know, different colors and different sizes, and we've got the lovely pink, but, um, oh, but sorry, not pink, salmon. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, there was another nice uh, user comment was that uh, people keep telling us that, that the salmon is hard to read, and because uh, Joshua was the genius who designed this, we made it more salmon, the more people who bookmark it, so it's even harder to read the number of people. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna fix that. People have pointed that out a few times. 
the other thing's lowercase as well. So if you look, uh, you know, edit, delete is lowercase, the, the tags are lowercase, the three days ago are all lowercase. So it's sort of hard to distinguish some of these things. You'll see in a second what I mean. So we have the salmon, I shouldn't, I said pink, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm gonna run through very quickly an animation that sort of shows how we've changed the old site to the new site. And then I'm gonna go back over it and sort of commentate over it so you can sort of get it, get, understand what we've done and why we've done it. So hopefully the regular users of Delicious will sort of notice and understand what we're doing. Uh, other people will get an explanation in a second. So here we go, it'll just take about a minute. Fitted with sound, but we didn't have any. Okay, so what are we doing here? So as it, Joshua described at the beginning, we have the delicious with all the dots in the funny places, and it's kind of a cool concept, but we actually own delicious.com, so we can use that. And it's also hard for people to remember where to put all those dots, so we're, that's why we're gonna get rid of those guys. We reduce our carbon footprint as well. Um, so uh, up the top, we're gonna have a new navigation which sort of clearly spells out what Delicious is all about. So we have bookmarks, people, tags. Uh, at the moment you have, when you look at, your, at a page on Delicious, you have this your bookmarks, your network, your um, subscriptions, links, view, and post. Um, a bit too much language there, we don't really need all of that stuff, so we're getting rid of the yours. We're turning the links for you into an inbox. The post is an action that you save on delicious, do things on delicious, it's not really a place, so we're getting rid of that. Um, we're gonna change from the, the painfully bright blue to a slightly subtler blue, and we're gonna bring in those icons. And we're gonna be a new page that's coming called Tags. Um, and we're gonna have a more sort of English language title at the top, so you can sort of quickly see what this page is about. Um, this uh, top URL, uh, pretty URL structure that's part of the page, we're turning into more of a widget. Um, where you can type a tag. You come in here and we're gonna have auto suggest, auto complete on those tags. Um, and you can type another tag and do intersections. And kill one and go back to a smaller view, uh, less restrictive view. Uh, so the core part of Delicious are, the, are these bookmarks and the current sort of typography format of it is a little wordy and we're gonna clean all this up. So on every bookmark we have to and then dot, dot, dot on and we have save this. So we're gonna get rid of the, the this, just have one save. We're getting rid of the two, the dot, dot, dot on is, is gone and saved by other people, we're getting rid of that. And we're just gonna put a box of the lovely salmon around the two and we're gonna move it over and create a, a sort of slightly new grid. Uh, we're gonna move those tags over, move that. Two, two up and put the date on the left. Uh, and then here is a bit of capitalization. So we're gonna capitalize the date so it makes it easier to spot the actual content in the, on the page. Changing the blue down, um, the save is gonna be capitalized. And then puts a little uh, bit of color behind those tags so you can see what they are. And those boxes, as they get bigger, they get a darker blue and more readable instead of less readable. And so if you apply that same system to the whole page, you sort of clean it up quite a bit. Uh, on the right, we've got the tag list, so we're gonna move the numbers over to the right so you can actually read the, the content um, rather than reading the numbers. And then, uh, so bring this all together, we have the new top of the page, the new title, um, each of those bookmarks. 
we're up on the right hand side, we're collating all the actions you can do to the page or on the page. And then um, comes a little bit of animation. We're not going to do this in CSS. Uh, when you click on a, a tag on a bookmark, you restrict to that view so you can just see the animation stuff. And then on the list view, we're highlighting that tag on the list so you sort of much more clearly understand where you are on the site. And then on, on the right, we've got the related tags. And then we also have a new view. So doing this is we've lost a little of, of the compactness because before we had very sparse text, very close together. So what we've given people is an option to get a, that compactness back again or see more detail. So here we've just got the titles. If you click this, you get to see the URLs. Um, you can also go back to the, to the title or even a smaller view, which is just, just the titles only with no tags. And then sort of quickly flipping through some of those other key pages. So my network here, we have a, a network uh, list of people on the right. Uh, we're allowing people to actually give, give uh, nicknames to the people in their, in their list. So people who have wacky usernames, you can actually give them your own nickname, much like a chat system. Um, subscriptions, the inbox. So we're ch changing the links view into an inbox. Same functionality. So here's a side-by-side sort of -side comparison of the old site and new site. So this is the front page, this is the new front page. So we have uh, thumbnails still. We even have two tabs where you can explore and see the most popular. Uh, the recent page, then with the, the icon. These are sort of all self-explanatory, pretty similar to the This is a good one. Uh, when you intersect two tags together, you get related tags like this. And it's sort of taking up half the page, this tag list. So we're just going to keep a simpler list on the right. So again, we're really emphasizing this, this key idea of having people and tags. So there are two really other really important pages I haven't showed you with the animation. And it's the URL page and the, the search page. The URL page is when you click on that number, saved by X many other people, um, or the blue boxes that we have now. So uh, this is what you get if you do that at the moment. There's a list of every single bookmark that's ever been made of this URL. Uh, on, the, on the left, we have the notes that everyone has ever left, and then on the right, we have a list of all the people and the tags that they've used. Um, the new design is just so much cleaner. We have the, the people on, on the left there. This is a complete log of all the people uh, bookmarks on that page, and you can click on the notes and just see purely the notes and the related tags on the right. Uh, the search is another big thing on Delicious. The current search system is a little slow if you've ever tried to search. We have this sort of split, but whenever you do a search, you get to see results for your bookmarks or any everyone else's. On the new design, we're gonna sort of split it up a little bit more. So you can search sort of this federated way. And can, so this is, this is um, you can search the context that you're in, your bookmarks, your network's bookmarks, everyone's bookmarks, and it's gonna look a little something like this. So the, the, so the topic of this um, talk series is, is being uh, beyond Web 2.0. And I think for a Delicious team, it's sort of been about reflection. Like Delicious was one of the poster children for, the, for Web 2.0. It was sort of used in Tim O'Reilly's um, sort of manifesto about two, uh, Web 2.0. And for us to come, come back and go beyond Web 2.0, it's been about looking back at, at the system that we created and sort of pulling out the most important aspects of it and, and, and bringing that forward in, in this new design. The other thing we've done is always sort of focused on the users in the system and, and how, they, how, how they use it and, and give them the, the tools to help them, them do that. So there we go. We'll be launching soon. <laughs> Questions, anybody? Well, in that area, are you, are there shortfalls that, that people have? At least 
partially. Say um, the question again. What's that? Oh, uh, how have we reflected on how people pivot around information? Um, a lot of a lot of the design is sort of um, we wanted to. We ha so when we when, we, when I built Delicious initially, um, it was um, very. Uh, organically grown, right? I put together piece by piece. I put in different UI parts, and you see how different things got added over time. Um, so along with rebuilding this because we needed to rebuild the underlying mechanism, we also wanted to sort of reboot the design, something that was a little bit more scalable. So we've, we put in a little bit of what we've learned for, for this new design and are ready to move to a newer, um, to, 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 to change how people access the information as well, right? But, but we didn't want to do that much of a change all at once. Um, so a little bit of it is here um, in terms of the design grammar and making it more understandable and, and visible. Um, the next steps going forward are going to be around um, changing, unifying um, uh, the way people access the actual information itself, right? So, you know, like I said, I, we didn't want to actually, you know, yank out the notion of, you know, tags or popular, right? They're all separate silos right now. Um, and in the future, they may come together a little bit more differently. Uh, but that's that's you know something that we're going to start evolving towards again. Yeah. So uh, first off, I want to say that you know having been educated in the '70s, I was always viewed attribution as being a name and a value associated with an object. One of the big things I really liked about yours is that you just simply had a name, and that wound up being simple enough, in fact, for people to go on and grab and use and. It's a great mechanism for information management. That, the fact, it didn't come from a central vocabulary. That is, people had a chance to go out and do their own stuff. Those, to me, were sort of the two key innovations that came through. User interface is nice, okay, but the ability, in fact, to go out and organize information in a way that was simple and intuitive to a wide number of people was great. That and orthogonality. So those concepts were really wonderful. Are we going to see any more concepts like that coming in to go out and help people do information management on this system? Uh, so the question was, what are new concepts uh, for information management at the system? Um, there's a lot of stuff. So, so one of the, the great things about Delicious is that it, it provides um, flexibility and not rules, right? So people can twist the different parts to do all kinds of things. We've seen a lot of um, uh, different uses from, from all the way from interesting to interesting. Um, but uh, so, so frequently people want um, more rich types of metadata than tags, right? And uh, a variety of different ways to sling around metadata. For example, um, you know, you, you, you like the, um, the lack of a, a central name base, um, but that also bothers some people, right? So I'm frequently uh, portrayed, I guess, as being against centralized namespaces, but I, Instead, Delicious works the way it does with the tags because I'm lazy, not because I have some sort of viewpoint, right? It was the easiest thing to type some crap in and go on to the next thing, right? Um, but instead, you know, there are controlled, controlled vocabularies are incredibly useful when they exist or when, it's, when there's someone mediating that, right? So I think that we ought to be able to take advantage of those kinds of things. Um, exactly how uh, is problematic? Right, so that's going to be a, a difficult design uh, path for, for Bernard to deal with, but uh, I look forward to seeing what he comes up with. Um, second is uh, that that people want to store more metadata uh, with bookmarks than just tags. So frequently, like for example, I see stuff that's like geo colon latitude colon a number, right, and that actually makes no sense for because I'm, I'm not going to look for everything that's on one line on the earth or something like that that's exactly that, that's, that's very silly. So um, one thing that I would really like to do is actually add fields to the bookmarks, right? And then, and then finally, the, the interesting thing is that, that you know, while URLs are very important for us, they're the keys to the kingdom on the web, um, they're not the only kind of thing that we manage, right? So I would, you know, the, the question is do we, um, do we actually need uh, the URL itself, right? Can it be just be a sort of generic metadata object that we're sling around piles of, right? Um, or can a bookmark have many URLs in it? So, for example, um, I think that Delicious does a great job of dealing with um, 
the information foraging task, right? The, oh, that's interesting, save it. Oh, that's interesting, save it, you know? But when you're trying to organize a trip somewhere and, and you, you, know, you find you know, 70 candidate links and then you, you, know, you go, okay, I'm, go I'm going to Italy. Uh, okay, these are all the possible hotels. Okay, this one's terrible, this one's terrible, this one's terrible. You know, there, there's, a, there's a sort of very structured research task that you engage in um, that no tool actually supports, right? Um, and I think that, uh, that while we're not gonna do all of that, I think that the organization, the information that's produced, that the, the or information that you organize is incredibly highly valuable to other people. Um, and I would like to be able to, to, to capture that ephemera in a, a reusable place so that you can, someone else can reuse that saved information. Um, but that said, uh, like delicious items are, are tagged, which means that they have a loose affinity or, or relationship to other items with the same tags. And that's about it, right? But frequently they have strong affinity to some task or strong affinity to each other. Um, I remember uh, a while ago um, someone posted, it was a very uh, cute photoshopping of a, uh, the, the Remington Rand design computer. It was actually a Photoshop picture of a submarine. Um, but it was, it was you know, a very silly photo with all kinds of, uh, uh, you know, a steering wheel and all kinds of, the size of a room. And uh, when someone bookmarked it and they said, oh, that, this, this is Photoshop, the original URL is whatever, right? So that, that URL, which was the picture of an, the actual original unphotoshopped version of the submarine, was sort of tightly bound to that other URL, right? And there's no way to express that in, in Delicious. So the, the, the ongoing trade-off is going to be um, how do we add that kind of flexibility and that kind of power without um, destroying the interface, right? So the, uh, the, 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 the value for an individual user is high. Um, the value for across the system for, for the network utility of the system, right, the, 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 the network effect effectively is, is how much data there is. So every time we make the UI a little bit more complicated, a little bit harder to transact, we, we raise the transaction cost, and that causes us to get less data, right? So, so the overall system is impacted. And it's a, very, it's, it's, it's a very important and difficult set of decisions to make. You know, why do we do this? Um, why do we do that? And how does it affect both the user and the, the whole, right? And, and there's lots of, lots of design decisions. In like, for example, there's no comments now, right? Because I didn't want there to be any sort of flame wars, right? Because I, I wanted to trade individual utility. I never wanted anyone to, to be scared away from their own bookmarks because there's some jerk there, right? So, so the design decisions around um, how people interact, the flexibility, and, and the value both individually and to the network are, are sort of a very difficult dance. First, I wanted to thank you for the very careful thought that you put into this and for the gift that you've given to all of us in this product. I want to acknowledge that. It's very important. I see two things in this as somebody who hasn't used this as yet. First, this is a virtual search team for me that can not just save me a little time, but can save my company incredible amounts of effort to produce value. That's one side. The other side is that this also has the flavor of a cocktail party for nerds. Now, that consumes time. Has anybody ever sat down and looked at the value produced versus the time consumed and given some kind of a measure to this? Well, if it were negative value, then the growth would be going up, I assume, right? So, so clearly our users find some positive utility in using the system, right? I, I do think of it as um, memory, right? So you are saving what you're paying attention to over time. You're able to recall that attention later, and potentially you're able to recall someone else's attention at another time. Right now, one of the things that was not in that was groups and organizational effects. That's something that we would like to put into the system, and I think that's actually very important. Um, again, we're just starting to learn. Uh, we, as a as a industry, are learning how to navigate titanic amounts of information. Right, there are hundreds of millions uh, of items in Delicious. Right, so actually figuring out ways to surface the relevant information to you. In with the actual minimum surface of interaction, people you know expect sort of semi-reasonably these days to type a couple words into a thing and get pretty much the answer, right? 
and, and we're at very early on in, in understanding that technology and, and understanding how that will go, especially when we understand other people's attention as brought into the system, right? So I think that in the future it will be better, right? I think that certainly the first use of the product is for yourself, right? So I look at other people's stuff on Delicious a bit. I, you know, I have, uh, for example, um, Bernard showed the network page, and I have all of my team and my friends, uh, I can see what they're bookmarking all the time, right? So it's very um, high signal, low noise, right? The overall system, there's lots of people with bad intention, there's lots of people who have different definitions of terms than I do, you know, all kinds of organizational issues, so on and so forth, right? And I think that, uh, I think over time, we will get better at that, and that we've begun somewhere and started, and I think that's the important thing. Point that you're dealing with the fundamental question of civilization. How do you use organization to link people together and increase the value of their activity factorially with the number of participants and basically make the activity of each of us amplified tremendously? When you solve that problem, you will solve the problem of civilization. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you. You have a very simple, elegant uh, REST API, a HTTP interface for, for others, others to use. When you relaunch, are you going to keep? Are you going to keep that? So, when I did that API, no one else really had, no other consumer service had a web, web API. So it was very easy to use. Um, I had to build it because I needed to move my own stuff into it from another system, right? So I, you know, that's why it was there. And it was designed for, um, largely for single user use for a GUI application like a, a, a Firefox extension or something like that because I knew that I would not be able to develop it myself um, since I, I never learned how to do that, right? Um, we have a new API on the board. Um, it will not launch with 2.0. Um, but there will be a transition time. Um, there is a lot of stuff that we also learned. Um, so by making the API very easy to use, we got lots of people in there, right? So anytime you create a, a system, a market, you wanna have the maximum uh, liquidity by lowering barriers to entry, right? Now we've got the system and we need to increase the barriers for entry a little bit for, for higher quality, right? So it will be a little bit more complicated in the future because there are a lot of design decisions around the API that make poor sense in retrospect. For example, uh, mechanically, you know, by using HTTP auth, that's very problematic because every endpoint is a dictionary attack possibility, right? I mean, there's, there's all kinds of things that are, are, are problematic, and when you've launched a system that's as large as um, delicious it will, at scale, there's a, there's a million stories about how, how these things go wrong. So we're probably going to uh, uh, re redesign something a lot, I think, more closely with the Flickr API since they're, you know, smarter than us, and so we'll just copy all their work. Describe a little bit how you were able to balance keeping your own intentions for the uh, initial mission of the company and the culture against the feedback you were getting from your users. Well, we just, just threw out all the ideas we didn't like. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you want do you want to speak to that? <laughs> <laughs> we've we've had a, a series of uh, sort of user testing um, sequences. We had um, in lab study with like twenty participants coming in and and trying out the new system. Um, we've also had an internal alpha within Yahoo and an ex, uh, external invite-only preview to get feedback. And um, so as part of the external one, we had a, we've set up a forum where people can come in and help and put comments and stuff into the system and give us feedback about how we're doing. So I, 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 mean, I mean, it's sort of general, um, we, we try and you know, pay a lot of attention, a lot of, a lot of the stuff in D2 is motivated by the feedback that we get from the first one. So, you know, trying to solve those things. I mean, it's difficult to understand what, what users are, are asking because they frequently don't have the internal dictionary to ask for what they want. They just can phrase it in terms of the problem they have. So it is a very difficult um, uh, sort of navigation exercise to figure out uh, where we are and where we need to be. Um, so again, we, we, we put something out there. and we're, it, This is not like it's done, it's perfect. You know, this is just something out there so that we can actually start accelerating again. So my question has to do with uh, employee communication with intranets. Have you thought about packaging this so companies could have their own delicious application so people could bookmark within the zillion pages within an intranet so they could have their own community with their own internal links rather than external? So the question 
question is uh, uh, shipping it for intranets. Um, we don't do software like that at Yahoo, but we do plan to have some sort of functionality for groups and organizations to be able to use that. We've certainly um, run into that with our own intranet at Yahoo, right? And we've had, we've had certain uh, considerations and design issues around that. And in thinking those through for that, so that Yahoo employees could use Delicious for, for Yahoo internal stuff. Um, you, know, you know, all kinds of things like, for example, um, if we can't fetch the page, right? If we can't actually, so Delicious doesn't touch the page bookmarked right now. But if we fetch the page and we could not reach it, maybe we should mark it private because it's probably behind a firewall. But that actually makes no sense. The page is down. Do they go up? And you know, it's very complicated. And, and luckily, we have a huge amount of uh, expertise in 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 the web crawling team and the web search team on that front. Um, but we're definitely thinking about how to support um, teams that wa that want to use Delicious directly for a group use. But we're not we're not going to ship a uh, internal uh, product for other people to use. Um, we're, we're not really focusing on the business model. We're, we're here to figure out what, um, how to let people sort of navigate the world and then the, the sort of residual information around that transaction, we're going to figure out how to build a better search experience um, both in Delicious and both on, on, on Yahoo Search as well. So that's sort of the, the product, the, the, the object of, of this exercise, not so much direct uh, revenue. Sounds like because it's step two that our friends, if you kept emphasizing people and tags, then did this people really well it would end up being or intersecting the social networking side really well. If you did tags really well, you could sort of be bordering semantic web. You were going to talk about search. So can you describe is this the new Yahoo? Is this the foundation platform for the new Yahoo? Uh, I wouldn't say that. It's we're not we're not trying to be a social network, right? Um, by emphasizing people, it's more about making it so that, that people can be discovered and can be interacted with. There, you know, in Delicious 1, there's no way to send people messages. In Delicious 2, there won't be either. The best is that you can send them, uh, send them a link, right? So it's all, it's all in band, right? It's, we're not going to spread out and do all sorts of kinds of things um, yet. And, uh, uh, but but I, I think, that, I think that, that the notion that people the semantic web and search are different things, I think is misguided. I think that they're all, they're all things that we might actually touch. Uh, recommendations. We actually had a recommendation engine that I wrote uh, years ago, and it didn't scale. Uh, and we are working on rebuilding it with Yahoo Research. So that there, it will come, come again. I guess I get to maybe get to ask the final question, which was, um, I was wondering if you have started thinking about mashing up with other social platforms like Open, open Social or Facebook or anything like we, that. We launched a, a, a Facebook uh, application. Um, open Social is, uh, is interesting, but uh, I don't think it really helps us very much. I think it's more of a widget platform um, from what I can tell from the documentation. So we're, we're watching that and we pay attention. Um, I think that um, probably a more important platform for us right now is probably mobile. Um, I, you know, one of the things that's great about Delicious is that people actually are able to, since they're able to, to mold tags the way they want rather than the way the system wants, that people frequently build productivity and workflow around it, right? So for example, I will bookmark things during the day as to read, and then I go to my Blackberry and read those things during the day. I think that's, uh, you know, again, there's a whole bunch of productivity and stuff that can be helped there much more directly than, you know, being social. That's not a goal in itself for us.